Hey everybody and welcome back to the Whiskey Cove and on today's episode we have an awesome epic 12 year bourbon battle. Run that video. Okay then folks, so why I decided to do this episode was I was getting a little bit low on the old Pappy Lot B12 and I thought instead of saving it for a special occasion let's just do an awesome 12 year whiskey battle or 12 year bourbon battle so on today's episode we have and we'll be doing this blind uh we have a pappy van winkle lot b at 12 years old we have 1792 age 12 years that did very well on our 17 year our 1792 whiskey battle i'll put a link down below for that we have Weller 12, and then we also have, and I know what you're thinking, you're probably looking, it's like, that Elijah Craig small batch isn't 12 years. And you'd be right in saying that, because originally Elijah Craig small batch, I think is about eight to 10 years. However, with this one, this one is a single barrel store pick. This is a store pick by 5280 whiskey in it. As you can see with the back label there, it's aged 12 years. So it is a 12 year whiskey. And you might recognize 5280 actually, because two of the folks from there were the ones that were involved in the uh, Hidden Barn Kentucky Straight project there. So interesting little tie together on that. So what we'll do is we'll get these whiskey into glasses and uh, we'll get my wife to uh, juggle them up a little bit. I'll take a seat down there and we'll go through them one by one. Okay then folks, these have been poured, these have been mixed up and I have no idea which is which. The only idea that I do have right now is this is going to be a treat. So with that being said, let's get into these bourbons. Let's do, let's go from uh, your left to my right. So one, two, three, four. So then I start with glass one. All the colors on these kind of look like a nice honey color. Maybe glass three looks a little bit lighter, but let's get into the nose on glass one. Definitely getting a really nice, rich vanilla sweetness straight away on that nose. Maybe a little bit of red berry there as well. Actually, I'm thinking more maybe like red Fuji apple peel as opposed to maybe red berry. I think that's coming through quite strong here. I, I kind of think that a lot of these are going to have the flame, flavor note, sort of flavor profile because three of those are, three of these are Buffalo Trace and one's Elijah Craig. And there's a bit of brown sugar there. Really nice sweetness there. Really inviting. Let's go in for a taste. So straight away, you do get some of that really nice sweetness that carries through. I will say it tastes a little bit thin actually, and it is quite spicy as well. I was expecting a little bit of spice, more so from the oak, but I feel like there's a little bit of rice spice coming through on this. I'm just seeing if I can pick up any grass, which I tend to associate with wheat whiskies, and two of these are wheats. Let's go in for another taste here. So you do get a lot of sweetness there. Like I said at the beginning, that kind of dissipates away and you're just kind of less with a lot more of those oaky or oak spice notes here. Like I said, a little bit of a thinner mouthfeel on this one, but it is a very nice and long finish. That spice just keeps on traveling and, and like that, that rice spice keeps traveling. And I'm picking up maybe like a slight little bit of citrus there on the back end, maybe like an orange peel kind of citrus. P pretty solid start so far on glass one. Let's uh, take a look on glass two here. And again, like I said, it kind of looks like a fresh honey color here. If you know, you know. Glass two. <clears throat> okay, so straight away, this, the nose on this is a lot different to the first one. Picking up definitely some honeysuckle straight away. That sweet honey, the sweetness I'm getting is more of a honeysuckle sweetness, is maybe uh, like the more of a sugar sweetness I got on the first one. Getting some note caramel notes as well, and definitely getting some really nice aged notes coming through. <clears throat> and I'm definitely, I'm, I am definitely getting some red berry on this one. Maybe like some like a dark cherry, like a maraschino cherry. Okay then folks, let's go in for a taste. So if glass one was a little bit thinner, glass two is very thick and oily, very viscous. Does a really good job at kind of like a mouthfeel and coating. Again, the honey sweetness kind of transfers over to the palate here as well. Let's have another taste. I feel like I'm getting some pecan notes as well. And I'm also 
I'm also getting the wood. I'm getting like a nice dry oak note, but I'm not getting hardly any spice on this one as well. Especially on the finish as well. There's just not much spice there. Maybe a little bit of like tobacco on the back end there, just as it kind of finishes out. I would say it's more of like a medium finish with glass two here. That was very good though. Uh, in terms of picking up some of the age notes, I feel like I was picking them up with kind of like that dry and oak note. Really nice. Let's go into glass three then, shall we? Okay, that sweetness, like that vanilla, like really pungent vanilla frosting sweetness I'm getting right up front. And I know I was getting like a red Fiji apple note on the first one, but I'm getting more kind of like a green Granny Smith apple here. I must have been eating apples or something yesterday because uh, I got a lot of apple notes. This is a really inviting nose. Kind of like that vanilla cream frost, like you get on like a birthday cake. It kind of dominates the nose there. And then it's, you kind of have that like bright, sour, tart, green apple undertones there. Definitely lots of caramel notes there and like some barrel char as well here. Really excited to get into this one. Let's try this. This is glass three. Okay, so on this one, Glass three, that sweetness, that kind of vanilla frost sweetness definitely comes into the palate. That same sweetness is there on the palate. The vanilla's kind of dropped off a little bit. I'm definitely getting a peanut note on this. Whether that uh, is, the, whether this is the Elijah Craig is another thing, but the, that peanut note is definitely there. Again, uh, in terms of the body, it's pretty thick, pretty viscous, good oil coating on the mouth. Let's go in for another taste here. Yeah, you definitely get some of those tobacco peanut notes, kind of like a peanut shell note. Um, like kind of like you're, you're chewing like a peanut shell and the shell's still in your mouth. It ends with a tiny a touch of spice there. There's definitely some cinnamon towards the end. A fantastic mouthfeel. I think the nose on this one was probably the best so far. So on glass number four, I'm definitely getting raspberry straight up front. It's a beautiful raspberry note right there. Definitely some oak there as well. And maybe like a touch of dark chocolate as well. So maybe think of like, maybe think of like a raspberry dipped in dark chocolate. You definitely get some of the sweet notes there as well. Mainly coming from the caramel, I would say. A little bit of char as well. That's a fantastic nose. Let's go in for another taste though. Oh, let's go in for a taste. This is glass four. So when I taste this straight away, I get some spice right there. Maybe a touch of like a grassy note as well. That's definitely there. I would say the, I would say for the body of the whiskey, I would say that again, it's quite thick. It does a really good job of coating your mouth. Not too much of that sweetness from the nose it transfers through to the palate here. It's more of a like dried oak experience or a dried wood experience. Maybe like a touch of like walnut, like walnut shell. Let's go and throw another taste here. There's definitely some more bacon spices with this one on the finish. They kind of do a little dance on your tongue there. No peanut shell, nothing like that on this one. A little bit, um, maybe it's just because it's sitting at the back end here of the palate or back end here from one through four. But there's not too much going on on the palate on this one. It's a little bit tame. Like I said, you get some of those, you don't get as much maybe those sweeter notes here on this one. It's just more of kind of like a more wood or aged experience here. So I think what we'll do is, or what I'll do is, I will pause the camera, I'll taste through them a little bit, and the time you come back, we'll have them in order. So stay with us. Okay then, folks. So with much deliberation, we have them in order, which I believe is from first to last. So what I will say is when I was going through them once more, when I went back to number one here, it kind of brought on this really nice toffee nose notes, and it kind of like it changed a little bit for the good. So it, you know where you're placed in the blind can definitely have an impact on the end result if you don't go back through them and try them a different few times. So like when the camera was away, I spent a good 15, 20 minutes kind of going through these an extra time. So with that being said, let's see what came in last place. So last place was my glass three. So glass three was, and we have the key. Where is that key here? Okay, we have the key here. So glass three was D for dog, and that was the Elijah Craig 12 year. 
a bit surprising actually because I thought that this might be the Elijah Craig however um, I just felt like this maybe was a little bit thin it just definitely didn't stand up to um, the rest of the whiskies it might have something to do with the positioning where it was necessarily towards the back end there but I give it a good shot you know I tried it as much as I could I don't think any of these whiskies were necessarily bad I think they all had some really good stuff going for them however ultimately paired in this blind it was always gonna be up against it from the beginning however I think that it's a very respectable whiskey and it would do a lot it would beat out a lot of other whiskies that's for sure but nevertheless in this whiskey bowl came in fourth so what comes in third third is actually glass number four so let's take a little look what that is and that is b for bravo that is 1792 aged 12 years a little bit surprised if i'm honest i kind of had 1792 down as a little bit of a dark horse again you had some of those really nice sweeter notes up front there but when it came to the palate i felt like it maybe it was a little bit lacking compared to the other whiskies yeah it had some really nice age uh, it had like a medium finish there but it was just not as complex as the other two and like i said that's no bash against these other two whiskies they were all fantastic juice but just not as good as the other two so with that being said let's find out what came in second place which was my glass number one which was a for apple which is funny because I had a lot of apple on this one. And that is a Pappy Van Winkle Lot B. It done really well. I felt that initially when I first tried it, it was just okay. But as I went through the whiskeys, went back and tried it a couple of different times, I just felt like it opened up and really took on some really nice like toffee and caramel flavors. The sweetness was there all the way through this whiskey and it had that really nice like apple Fiji note, which is really, uh, really enticing. And it also had like a really nice spice body there as well. I felt like there was a little bit of rice spice there. So really awesome rounded whiskey. With that being said, we have a first place winner, and that was glass number two, on which we all know what this was. This is Well at 12. So Well at 12 bringing home the W. And of course, you can do some research on the internet, and there are some rumors going around, or there are some rumors in the Whiskeyverse, that how they pick Pappy Van Winkle 12 is that they go through these Wella 12 barrels and kind of cherry pick the best ones, like the honey barrels, and then that goes into like the lot B. However, on this occasion, Wella 12, glass two was just fantastic. I felt like not only had it, it was a fantastic sweetness up front on the nose, I think number two had the best nose of all. I think that carried through to the palate as well, and it was just such a balanced whiskey as well. It had a really nice long finish. It wasn't anything offensive in the finish whatsoever, but it was just a really nice sweetness, really nice balance with the oak as well. And then I believe there were some other fruit notes coming through on this one. So what does that tell you? Don't spend a thousand dollars on Lot B, just get a bottle of Wella 12 instead. Like I said, none of these whiskies were awful. These were all fantastic whiskies and this was the hardest bind I've done to date. Bear in mind coming off the back of having COVID for a week, you know, I was able to taste these fantastically. I was able to taste these perfectly. When I had COVID, I didn't lose my taste, so that, that was never an issue. My nose inability was severely lacking, don't get me wrong, but that has all returned at this point. I feel like this was an excellent experiment to find out which of these 12 years is a fantastic whiskey. And just case in point, um, you, this is about a $100 bottle usually on secondary, you know, like I said, it's about $1,000 ice. Weller 12, I think I paid like $40 for Weller 12. If you're able to find Weller 12 at MSRP, it's a fantastic deal, excellent value on the price. Sadly, secondary two, three, four hundred dollars gets really crazy. Uh, 50 is 50 to 80 whiskey. I think I paid like $35 for it, $30 maybe even. It's about the same price as a usual, uh, a, a usual Elijah Craig, maybe with a couple bucks more. And you just don't see like 12 year old Elijah Craig store pick. So, really, really fortunate I was able to get this bottle. So, thank you for 50 to 80 whiskey. They didn't give it to me, but uh, they still managed to go and pick it out and they managed to release some to general sale at a liquor store where I was living or am living. And then lastly, we had 1792 who did fantastic fantastic in the 1792 blind battle but when you stack it up against quality like this couldn't stand the challenge and uh, you know ultimately came in uh, third place so 
maybe on another day it could have done a little bit better but that was the age 12 years whiskey bell hope you enjoyed what you saw today don't forget comment down below maybe if you have a favorite whiskey here maybe what you would have chose to come in first place if you enjoyed this video smash that like button and subscribe to the channel folks as we continue to make this community grow I'm trying to get 1000 subscribers by the end of the year so if you're on that fence hit that subscribe button my name's patrick i hope you enjoyed what we're doing and uh, as we drink through the world's whiskeys one glass at a time while at 12. cheers <laughs>